You know, my, my, my fight IQ is different. You know, it's something different. It's different when you're in the gym with me. But when you get in here, it's different ball game. I'm a whole nother savage. Trash talk is part of the game, but so is being confident in your skills. There's nothing wrong in believing you're the best in the world or that you're going to beat your next opponent. After all, if you didn't feel that way, why bother stepping inside the cage in the first place? I was always one of those guys, yeah. Oh, I, I can oh, believe yeah. you. <laughs> I'm sure 100%. You, yeah. no, I, I, you know, confidence grows through, through work ethic. And that's it, I put the work in and, and it's paying off and I truly believe that my work is the correct work. But while there is confidence, there is also looking down on your opponent. We've all seen those trash talk on wrong videos. This is a very common theme in MMA. And while it looks great if you back up your words, you will end up looking silly if you get crushed. In a picture perfect moment coming up, courtesy of Usman's face. Can't wait. I'm gonna break those bones in your face like a fucking chicken one, anyways. Can't wait to dismantle you. The Nigerian kingpin of the 170 pound division has steamrolled through the entire division and has shut tons of mouths in the process. The UFC welterweight champion Kamar Usman has evolved over the recent years, adding striking to his arsenal and putting people to sleep. When going up against pound for pound greats, you might want to think twice before making your prediction. And of all the superlatives. Welcome to the fighting business. I invite you to hop on into this new video series inspired by the one and only Motivedia Boxing, who has set the foundation for creators like myself. Shout out to the OG of the combat sports world on YouTube. In today's video, we take a look at some regrettable moments for the more recent opponents of Kamar Usman, shedding the lights on their arrogant or humble opinion before and after they felt the touch of the Nigerian's right hand. Tyron Woodley. There is no better place to start than when Kamar Usman first became welterweight champion. He was up against Tyron Woodley, who was fresh off a second round submission win over Darren Till. Despite a lackluster start as a champion, Woodley was slowly gaining respect during this time. Not many people expected him to lose anytime soon. That was the case even with Usman who was undefeated in the UFC, while Usman was bigger than Woodley, he was also a wrestler. He didn't have the dynamite that Woodley possessed in his right hand. Woodley even brought this up at the pre-fight press conference and saw zero chance of him losing to Usman. He mocked Usman for his lack of knockouts and asked him what he could do better than him. If it was a straight striking match, he'd knock him out. If it was grappling, he'd break his arm. If it was wrestling, he'd out wrestle him. Oh, what you gonna do better than me? Everything. You gonna out wrestle me? Everything. If we get in the octagon and I can throw no punches, no knees, no takedowns, no submission, I would kick your ass and just wrestle flat out. When it come down to striking, I would knock you out flat out. When it come down to grappling, I would break your arm flat out. There's that, nothing you can do. Bring that energy. In. Oh, you know what I'm gonna tell you? I'm gonna tell you right now. This what you gonna tell down. me? I'm about to say after anything, I take that you gonna show me. I'm gonna tell you. After I'm I take that look, you know what I'm telling you. I'm gonna show me, Sam. What you I'm gonna, gonna show you just me? Like this. You've been a good champion. Oh my God. You've been a good champion. Yeah. Team. Ella, here come your Uncle Jay. You talking back to your mentor right now? <laughs> <laughs> if you agreed with Woodley, you would have been wrong, just like he was. Usman dominated him over five rounds. He took him down with ease and kept him down. He bullied and overpowered him in the clinch. He even looked better in the striking department. By the end of it, everyone knew we had a new champion as Usman won a lopsided decision. All Woodley could do at the end was praise the now newly crowned welterweight champion and describing his loss like a bad dream. It all started to make sense where the nickname came from. I'm here with Tyron Woodley, ladies and gentlemen. Tyron, a, a tough defeat. Give us your thoughts on the fight. You know, Kamara came out, he brought it, you know. Um, and sometimes you have those fights in Octagon where you feel like it's a bad dream. You want to throw punches, but they won't leave your face. You see the opportunities, but you don't take them. And sometimes you just have those fights when you go out there and it's like a badass dream. You want to punch hard, but you don't punch. You want to move forward, but you're stepping back. So um, I had too many moments in there. And Kamara, he came out there and he won, so. And unfortunately for Woodley, the bad dream went completely in here. Kobe Covington. Kobe, chaos, Kobe. Oh, baby. Let's go. At UFC 245 in December 2019, 
Usman was set for his first title defense in a highly anticipated grudge match with Colby Covington. This fight was years in the making. You suck, Stuzman! You suck! Keep crying! Whoa! Total chaos here. It looks like UFC security. And as we've been accustomed to, Covington ramped up to trash talk. That's right, you're a loser. No one gives a about you. Everybody came to see me, so shut your mouth and listen to the champ. Because after I break that bitch on Saturday night, he's going to need to sleep on his couch. I'm going to bounce it off the canvas, and I'm going to kick it into the third row. He went personal, mocked Usman's heritage. Sweet bed sheets. What happened to your hair, man? But as far as how the fight would go, Covington was extremely confident that he'd not only be the first person to defeat Usman in the UFC, but that he'd leave him in a pool of his own blood, expose him, and cause him to retire. And now it's time! And to Covington's credit, it was a very close fight that went back and forth and was entirely striking. Many observers had different scorecards going into the final round. 20 minutes down, five to go. I mean, we might be 2-2 going to We very well I mean, might be. He might have won that oh. round. However, it didn't matter in the end as Usman would knock Covington down twice before getting the TKO finish. But it was this shot that really caused the downfall of Covington. What better way to shut Covington up than by literally breaking his jaw? Covington didn't even stick around for the post-fight interview as he ran from the octagon backstage. This one is not just for me, this one is for the whole entire world right now. Months later, the controversial figure would make his appearance on the Ariel Helwani MMA show claiming that he had stepped on a banana peel and that the fight should have never been stopped. I'm beating his ass again. I've won the whole entire fight. The fight's mine. They're about to wrap the welterweight championship around my waist. And then all of a sudden, I slip on a banana peel. But as we all know, this fight wouldn't be the last time they meet. So to be clear, what you're saying is you want an immediate rematch. You want your next fight and Usman's next fight to be you versus him. Part two, right? Part two. Jorge Masvidal. Next up for Usman was a short notice fight with Jorge Maslow at UFC 251. Usman was originally supposed to face Burns only for the latter to pull out due to testing positive for COVID-19. And so arriving as the savior we all needed, but never deserved, Jorge Maslow hopped on and took the fight on six days notice. I'm cutting weight bro, I feel like shit man, but okay. And created one of the biggest anticipation for a fight we had seen since the McGregor days. Masvidal was riding high at this point. He was not a bona fide superstar following knockout wins over Darren Till. Ben Askren. The fight clock is brought to you by Mo. Oh! Nate Diaz. By TKO, and now Everyone was rooting for him. And while it was a short notice fight for him, he still expected to do what he was doing in recent times. Baptize Usman separate him from his consciousness and get the fast knockout because he's no joke now talk to us about what we should expect to see a baptism I'm baptize this man it, all right i gotta look and do it as violent as possible and i gotta leave you completely and utterly destroyed you know and, and it sounds violent and it is violent but that's how i continue to, to elevate my status if there's only one thing on my mind that's end them at all costs of course that didn't happen and it was a pretty unmemorable fight with Usman taking Masvidal down and clinching him for five rounds. Remember the foot stomps being the highlight of the fight? At the end of it, Masvidal was quick to pull the six days notice card and that with a few more weeks to prepare, he had what it takes to beat the undisputed champion. I'm just not convinced that I can't beat him with a full training camp, so I would love nothing more than instead of six days, six weeks, it'll happen if I gotta win another fight or so, whatever I gotta do to get back on the high horse and, and compete against this man again. The promotion for their next fight had already started, and as we all know, these two would meet again very soon. Gilbert Burns At UFC 258, Usman finally fought Gilbert Burns. They knew each other very well. After all, they were good friends at one point. They were also former training partners, and while there was respect between them, there was also a certain amount of tension. 
but what made things really interesting was the fact that they had trained and sparred together. Surely, they both knew who got the better of each other, who was more dominant in wrestling, who got submitted the most, who got the better in the striking department. Burns was certainly confident. He stated that the champion knew that he could submit him from anywhere, and that deep down, Usman also knew who was going to win. I know I can submit him anywhere, anytime, in the bottom, on the top, in the cage, anywhere. He knows I can submit him. He's, he might, like he said, oh, people know who's gonna win. He said, yeah, they know. Yeah, he knows. He knows you. Come fight night, Burns had a great start as he staggered Usman with a right hand in what was the first time we really saw Usman seriously hurt. However, Burns didn't follow up on it as he ended up pulling guard and allowing Usman to recover. What followed was a jabbing masterclass from Usman, who battered and dropped Burns before eventually finishing him off via TKO. And that will do it! And still, the best welterweight in the world! Burns could only erupt into tears inside the octagon while Usman looked on as his friend was dejected. They would eventually embrace each other and resume their friendship, but on this night, it was clear who the better mixed martial artist was. It wasn't exactly the way I want to be. I think I, I get over, over excited. It was, it was almost done, but I, I cannot make those mistakes to become a champion. Before I go, you know, we got this little street thug calling himself a uh, 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 Jesus. He thinking he's Jesus. And, you know, Joe, we tried to make that fight several times. They tried to make that fight, but he kept backing out. The only reason this man took the fight is because it was on six days of notice and he had a built-in excuse. And he's still running his mouth talking about, oh, he broke my nose and, and stepping in on six days. Give you three weeks, he's gonna do something. Guess what? It's not done because this time I'm gonna finish your ass. Or him as well too. Usman would then run things back with Masvidal a couple of months later at UFC 261. The narrative was set. Masvidal would train with a full camp this time, and finally deliver the baptism he promised. He was also fighting in front of his home fans in Miami to gain an added advantage. Leading up to the fight, Gamebred promised to expose Usman for the coward that he was. This time, he also mocked Usman's lack of power. I mean, I, I got into 25 minutes with him and I never wobbled and he never hit my chin and I said, oh snap, I don't want to get hit again. I'm going to expose the coward that he is, you know, and I say that with all honesty because um, he's nothing but a coward. Masvidal would also mock Usman's power during the rematch, as well as he would smile after absorbing a shot from Usman. But that happened right before Usman would deliver one of the most violent right hands that knocked the lights out of Masvidal for one of the most emphatic finishes in recent history. And of all the It was the first time Masvidal had ever been knocked out cold. It was in front of his home fans, and it was against a guy he stated had no power in his hands and could only win by hugging. A true example of MMA trash talk on loan, as all Masvidal could do was be humble in his post-fight interview, which to his credit, he was very classy in defeat. First time in my career and it's in front of all my people, my family, my friends, so it hurts. I've never been knocked out in 50 pro fights. Usman showed me something that uh, he didn't show the first fight. I didn't, I didn't feel his power, and that's what happens when you get overconfident, man. There's nothing I can say, but he won this fair and square, and God bless him, man. Classy in defeat, sir. Always a pleasure. So now I've got to ask you. We have Kamaru Usman working here tonight. He is on the desk. Um, what would you like to say to him? Marty Fake Newsman, you got so lucky last time. You know what happened two days before? That was the, the biggest, worst fight of my life. That was my worst night, and that was your best night. Wait till the next time I see you. There ain't gonna be no cheap shots. You're not gonna be able to call fake nut shots. You're not gonna cross it. Your no, face. Marty Fake Newsman, you're I you broke. You didn't break your my face. face. I got right up and protested look it right away. Me. That was a look fake stoppage, me. fake rap, broke fake fight. Wait till face. I see you next time. Wait till I see you next time, Marty Fake Newsman. You're dead. You're dead. Colby Covington, too. The final fight we're looking at is Usman's most recent one which was a rematch with Colby Covington at UFC 268 in November. Covington, as usual, paroded the same excuses of how his jaw never broke. The referee was biased against him. 
and that he suffered from an early stoppage. But this time, he was out for revenge. He knows who daddy is. He knows who really won that fight. If he didn't fake time out the first fight, I would have destroyed him. But Saturday night's the future, and I'm destroying Marty Fake Newsman. Nearly two years in the making, the heated rivals would finally collide again. And if it was anything like the first encounter, we were all in for a competitive treat. No, no, no touch It's time! Covington had a slow start in the rematch. He would almost get finished in the second round as Usman dropped him hard twice. Covington would survive and have a strong finish to the fight with a few moments of his own. It wasn't enough in the end as Usman still won a straightforward unanimous decision. Covington, whose face was somewhat battered, could only put a humble front as he embraced Usman at the end of the fight before stating that Usman had the better night in his post-fight interview. Yeah, I had my moments, you know, I, I wobbled him a couple times at the end of the round, just wasn't able to capitalize. It was his night, he had a better night. But that was only until he later claimed he felt he won the fight, but no surprises there. No, I'm definitely not proud of my performance. I should have won that. It was, it was laser thin again. I honestly thought I had it 3-2, and it was very close. He clipped me. I clipped him a couple times. Whatever media reporter in here say I went for 11 takedowns and had un unsuccessful attempts, fake news. You guys do real journalism. That's why you guys aren't journalists. You don't have journalism degrees because you put this fake news out. I obviously took him down. With that being said, words are not as painful as a fist to the mouth but they can stay on top of you for a lot longer. Make sure you mean what you say before you say it. But all in all, fighters should believe in themselves even if it sounds unrealistic to us fans. If you can take this as a lesson, the first person that needs to believe your wildest dreams are you. So at the risk of failing, speak your truth loud and clear and prove us wrong. Thank you for sticking around for a couple of minutes today. I hope to catch you on the next one. For now, I gotta bounce. Peace out.